This is the first of a few videos with the answers explained for bonding. These are questions I put together from the three 2015 New York State Chemistry Regents exams. So we're just going to get started and I don't want to go longer, too longer than about five minutes per video and we'll see where maybe some of the questions start to repeat themselves and uh, information to pick up along the way. All right, so let's get started with one. Which elements can react to produce a molecular compound? Well, if you have a molecule, you have two or more nonmetals bonded together. So that's exactly what you're looking for. This has shown up before. If you've listened to any of the other videos that I've put together, you're looking for two nonmetals. You have a periodic table. And when you look at the periodic table, they're all symbols, no names. So. It means you either have to look up all of the names on reference table S, and I'm going to suggest that if you don't know any of them. If you just kind of wing it and say, all right, I think, you know, sulfur is S and, you know, hydrogen is H, you're able to make a mistake. But that's all you're looking for are two, two elements that, of course, are nonmetals. The other thing about this question that's a little bit tricky, the answer is two, hydrogen and sulfur is that hydrogen, while it's a nonmetal, is always shown on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Now, there's a space here because it is not an alkali metal, but maybe New York State picked that because some kids might get tricked and say, oh, it had to be two from the right and not one from the left, one from the right. But hydrogen is its own group, so the answer is choice two. Let's go to uh, question two. What occurs when two fluorine atoms react to produce a fluorine molecule? When you have a balanced equation, bonds are breaking and new bonds are forming, and you overall have an endo or an exothermic reaction. What New York State likes to do, and you're going to see this repeated a lot here, is they like to just go over one step of the process. So in question two, if I have two fluorine atoms and they're going to bond, I'm going to get the diatomic molecule F2. What you need to know that if I'm going uh, to form bonds, or actually I'm not going to, but bonds are going to be formed, then energy is released. If bonds are broken, energy needs to be absorbed. Two facts, know them. It comes up a lot, and again, you're going to see it in the next couple of questions. So for question two, energy is released because a bond is formed. You went from two atoms to a molecule. Let's move on to question three. Two molecules of HBr collide and then form H2 and Br2. During the collision, what happens to the bonds in the HBr molecule? Well, in order to break this apart, energy had to be absorbed. And that is choice one. Go on to question four. Look at question four. Question four is the opposite of what I just wrote for question two. Which statement describes what's occurring during this reaction? Well, now you see energy is a reactant. That means energy has to be put in. Energy is absorbed and the bond is broken. So that is two. Now, I also call these two for one type questions. Same thing with question two. Answer the first part and then answer the second part. Usually, you can knock out two of the four choices, and then you're left with only two choices being the correct answer. All right, let's check out question five. Which atoms will bond when valence electrons are transferred from one atom to another? Well, the transferring of, of course, electrons is going to be an ionic bond. And ionic bonds are between metals and nonmetals. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for the metal and the nonmetal. So you go through, for example, oxygen and selenium. Here's oxygen. Here's selenium. They're both nonmetals. I go back. Choice two, oxygen and strontium. Here's oxygen again. Let me get rid of selenium. And here's strontium. That's my answer. The ionic bond is going to be between oxygen and strontium. Choice three, oxygen and hydrogen, two nonmetals. Again, a kid might get confused because hydrogen is on the left. 
but this is a non-metal. And the last choice was oxygen and phosphorus, both non-metals. Keep working hard. Move on to the next video, which is part two.